But first, let's get to our shopping list. And right here at the top of it is this Peugeot 505 station wagon. You know, the station wagon has to be the transportation stereotype of the suburban American household. But like a lot of other possessions we like to call our own, the station wagon actually originated somewhere else. Automotive legend has it that Francis Peugeot made the first one in 1894. So you'd have to call this new 505 model just the latest refinement of a 90-year continental tradition. Only now, its primary goal is to be adopted by upper-middle-crust U.S. families. And that means coaxing America's affluent suburbanites into thinking Peugeot the next time their Mercedes or Volvo wagon is ready to be traded in. To do that, the French took drastic action. It wasn't enough just to plunk down a wagon body on the 505 sedan's chassis. Instead, Peugeot engineers insisted on stretching it by more than six inches. To cover that 114-inch wheelbase, the same as a Ford LTD wagon, Peugeot also extended the 505 sedan's handsome Pininfarina styling. The lines now flow past an ocean of glass to form a most unusually attractive box-backed car. But they were careful not to give up any utility for style. The result is some 79 cubic feet of carrying capacity, the most of any imported wagon. You get to it through a large upward opening hatch that has a fixed window. But all 505 wagons come with both a hatch glass defroster and wiper washer. Open the hatch and you'll find a wide flat cargo floor with metal runners that protect the carpeted platform. Fold the rear seat flat and there's practically as much room there as in a small pickup. In fact, a full sheet of plywood can be carried above the wheel wells, along with up to 1,125 pounds of human and other cargo. The front occupant abode is also spacious and well-appointed. It has a far more straightforward feeling than most French cars of the past. Like the exterior, the interior is conservative in styling. The horn on the turn signal stalk is the only eccentric touch. And speaking of touch, we very much liked our contact with the exceptionally comfortable bucket seats. And on cold winter mornings, who wouldn't appreciate the seat heaters that came on our test wagon? And since symbols can speak louder than words, the seat heater switch, like all other controls, has an international symbol on it to tell you what it's for. After all, this car is being sold in a lot of countries. It might confuse you at first, but it pales by comparison to the four-handled heater air conditioning system. At least it does work well. So does the instrument pod that is clear and precise, although the use of some bright colors gives it a bit of a cartoon-like appearance. Oh well, that's a small beef. As is our feeling about the demure three-light fuel economy indicator, here called Econoscope a common item found on most European cars of this class. A bit small for its class, but no less refined is the 505 standard two-liter fuel-injected four-cylinder. Its pushrod design, along with the wagon's rear-drive nature, denotes the simplicity and durability needed for long service in countries that have fewer paved roads than we do. Besides making the first wagon, Peugeot also put the first diesel engine in a passenger car back in 1922. That tradition continues with the wagon's 80 horsepower turbo diesel option. But most 505 wagons imported into the U.S. will be gas powered, since even it is barely strong enough to pull around this car's 3,400 pounds. And with the standard five-speed manual, the best zero to 60 time we recorded was a slow 15.5 seconds. A three-speed automatic is an option. But apart from straight line dashes, the rest of the Peugeot 505 wagon's performance is fine. While it's not a bread box shaped racer, its handling is most predictable. Although body roll is excessive, like most French cars, it's less so than a typical Renault product. This 505 drives more like a sedan than a wagon, and that's high praise. We also want to praise Peugeot's use of a load-sensing brake proportioning valve to regulate front-to-rear stopping friction. That means that whether stuffed or empty, stops should be free of traditional wagon tail swing. 
our car did indeed stop straight and short, but with lots of nose dive. An average distance of 115 feet from 55 is very good. Something else we like about French cars, they're smaller than average turning diameter. That must be because of all those narrow back streets in Paris. But we get the benefit. The 505's curb-to-curb -curb circle is a petite 35 feet. Indeed, there are a lot of surprises in the Peugeot 505 wagon. One is the low base price for the standard GL model, $11,990. That buys a car equipped with most everything a family needs except air conditioning. If you want the full treatment, our upline S model will cost you about four grand more. Another fine factor is the interior noise level. At 55, a low 67 decibels is not only most unwagon-like, but it rivals Napoleon's tomb for isolation. Fuel economy, too, gets more than a passing grade with our car's EPA ratings of 22 city and 31 highway. Our 100-mile test loop, unloaded, resulted in a good 26 miles per gallon. So aside from the anemic power, MotorWeek found the new Peugeot 505 wagon an extremely pleasant car to live with. Does that mean that it's also right for all those nouveau riche driveways? Well, it's conservatively attractive, big inside without being overbearing outside, and comes from one of the best automotive coutures in Europe. So according to the rules of our copy of the Preppy Driving Manual, it should be an instant hit, as well it should be. Bon appétit. <laughs>